Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about MPLS VPNs. MPLS stands for Multi Protocol Label Switching, and WAN connectivity can be provided over an MPLS infrastructure. The MPLS network is usually going to be operated by a service provider, but you will find some large companies with their own MPLS network as well. Traffic from multiple customers when we're using a service provider's network can travel over that provider's shared MPLS network. So this is a VPN service because it's traffic from multiple customers using the same shared underlying infrastructure. When we use MPLS VPNs, the customers are kept strictly separate from each other. So it is a virtual private network. Different levels of service level agreement for uptime and traffic delay and loss are usually available at different price points. So this is different than a VPN going over the internet. A VPN going over the internet could be passing through multiple service providers, so it's impossible to get a single unified SLA for the end-to-end -end traffic. But when you're using an MPLS VPN, it's going to be with one service provider that owns the MPLS network. So that service provider can give you guarantees for the uptime, for the delay, and the loss. And they will often have different guarantees at different price points. Maybe they'll have a gold class, which will get really good quality, a silver class, and a bronze class. Ethernet connections are typically used to connect down to the customer router and MPLS VPNs provide a full mesh topology by default. This is different than leased lines which use point to point links. With our point to point links, if we wanted to have a full mesh connectivity, we would need to put in those point to point links going everywhere. With MPLS, it's different. Maybe you've already got five sites that are connected into the MPLS VPN. When you add a sixth site, it's automatically added with full mesh connectivity to all of the other sites. This is good because it means whenever one site is communicating with another site, the traffic is going to go over the optimum path. So looking at our MPLS VPNs, in the diagram here, we've got the service provider MPLS network. Obviously, real world, there's going to be more than three routers there. To give you the terminology, a PE is a provider edge router, which connects to a CE, which is a customer edge router. And the routers in the middle going across the provider's core are P routers, provider core routers. So our PE routers connect to the CE, which is the customer edge router. And you can see in the diagram here, over in the top left, we've got customer A have got an office in New York. The PCs in New York are in the subnet 10.0.0.0 slash 24. Then we've also got site one in Boston. The PCs there are 10.0.1.0 slash 24. And there's a second site in Boston where the PCs behind the CE router are in the subnet 10.0.2.0 slash 24. So the example you see here is for a layer three MPLS VPN. You can also get layer two VPNs that we'll get to in a minute. So for a layer three VPN, the customer sites are all in different IP subnets. We can also have customer B who have also got a VPN going over that same shared core infrastructure. Customer B have got an office in New York that's using subnet 10.0.50.0 and customer B have got an office in Boston with subnet 10.0.2.0. Notice that both customer A and customer B have got sites that are using the same subnet 10.0.2.0. That's fine. 
because the different customers are kept strictly separate from each other and we've got separate routing tables. So you can have custom, different customers using the same IP subnet that will work just fine. And this is a VPN technology because we've got multiple customers going over that same shared network and it's layer three because each site is in a different IP subnet. When we're using layer three MPLS VPN, MPLS runs across the provider's core on the PE and the P routers. The customer CE routers do not run MPLS. They don't know anything about MPLS. They're just configured as normal IP routers. The customer CE routers peer at layer three with the provider PE routers. You'll see what that means on the next slide. And static routes are a routing protocol run between the CE and the PE. And the PE router looks just like another customer router to the customer. The provider's core routers are transparent to the customer. So the customer can see the PE router because it connects to it, but it doesn't know that the P routers going across the core are there. And like I said earlier, the customer sites are in different IP subnets. So looking at our config here, you can see customer A in New York, their CE router peers with the PE router at layer three, meaning on the CE side, we give it IP address 192.168.0.2. And on the PE side, we give it IP address 192.168.0.1. So the CE router can see that it is directly connected to the PE router. For getting traffic over to the other sites, we can either use static routes or we can use an IGP. This first example, we're going to use static routes. So on the CE router, we configure interface gig 0 slash 0 facing the PE, IP address 192.168.0.2, 255.255.255.252. And then we're using a summary route, IP route 10.0.0.0. 255.255.0.0. The next hop is the PE 192.168.0.1. So that summary route takes care of the 10.0.1 slash 24 network and the 10.0.2 slash network. So for configuring the CE routers, you, you just configure them as if the PE is another normal customer router. We've no MPLS configuration on the CE routers at all. All of the complicated part of the config is done on the PE routers, which you don't need to know right now because that comes under the service provider track. You will not be tested on that. So we can use static routes or we can use an IGP. Here I'm using RIP for the example because it's nice and simple config to fit on the slide here. So on the CE again, interface gig 0 slash 0, IP address 192.168.0.2 with a slash 30 mask, router RIP version 2, network 10.0.0.0 so that I'm going to advertise my internal networks and network 192.168.0.0 so that will enable RIP on the interface facing the PE. Now my internal routes will be advertised to the other sites over in Boston. I'll also learn about the sites over in Boston as well with a next hop address of 192.168.0.1. So that's how you configure it with the IGP. All of the different routing protocols are supported technically, but what you'll often find is that the service provider won't support them all to make their life easier. Okay, so that was our layer three MPLS VPNs. You can also get layer two MPLS VPNs as well. With these, the CE devices do not peer with the PE devices. They don't even see that the PEs are there. The entire provider network is transparent to the customer. The provider network acts just like it's a giant switch and the customer sites are in the same IP subnets, not the different IP subnets that we had with our layer three VPNs. So this is what a layer two MPLS VPN is going to look like. We've again got the provider's core infrastructure with their PE and their P routers. A CE device is going to connect into the PE. You'll see for customer A in New York, behind the CE, which is a switch here, they're on subnet 10.0.0.0 slash 24. Then they've got a site in Boston. The PCs there are in the same subnet, 10.0.0.0 slash 24. And the second site in Boston, again, they're in 10.0.0.0 slash 24. 
So what this allows to happen is across a wide area network, it looks to the PCs like they're all in the same network and they're all in the same IP subnet. So we can do that for customer A. We can also do it for customer B as well. In our example here, customer B are actually overlaying layer three on top of layer two. They've got a router on the left with IP address 10.0.50.1 slash 30. The router on the right is 10.0.50.2 slash 30. So you can see from this, the two routers, they appear to be layer two adjacent. The two routers think they're directly connected to each other. They don't see the provider network at all. Some reasons why we would want to use a layer two MPLS VPN. Maybe we want to cluster an application over the WAN and to be able to do clustering for this particular application, all of the different servers need to be in the same IP subnet. So maybe I've got a server with IP address 10.0.0.1. I've got another server with IP address 10.0.0.2. That would normally mean that they have to be in the same LAN, but now with a layer two MPLS VPN, I can put them in different sites. So this gives me really good redundancy. Other reasons for using a layer two MPLS VPN, maybe as a disaster recovery solution. So maybe I've got my main site, it's layer two adjacent to the disaster recovery site. This makes it really easy to migrate my servers across if I do have a disaster at the main site, because they can keep their same IP address. Some terminology for our layer two MPLS VPNs. VPLS is virtual private LAN service. This is a multi-point layer two VPN. You saw in the example I gave you earlier, we had three sites that were all in the same IP subnet. That would be using VPLS because I've got more than two sites. VPWS is a virtual pseudo wire service and that is a point to point layer two VPN. So they both work the same way, but with VPWS, we've only got two sites. With VPLS, we've got more than two sites. Okay, so that was our MPLS VPNs. I showed you the config earlier for the layer three VPN. It's very simple from the customer side. So I don't need to do a lab demo for that. You knew everything that was covered there already. So we will start with the next technology in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.